Hey guys, welcome to TST Garage. I'm Bart, and today in this video, I'll be showing you how to install the TST Industries brake light modulator on your bike. Now, a brake light modulator, sometimes called a strobe, sometimes called a brake light flasher, what it does is basically enables you to install some electronics on your bike so that when you press your brakes, the brake light flashes in some kind of pattern and alerts the drivers behind you that you will be stopping. Our particular brake light modulator comes pre-wired to a plug that interfaces with a sub harness that we provide specific to your bike model that enables plug and play functionality with your bike. So that means that the installation is really fast and uh, you can do it yourself. Now the electronics inside, we do have the ability for you to program this unit to three different functions and then subsequently adjust the rate of the effect to your liking. Our first programmable mode is strobe alert. This mode will produce nine flashes and then stay solid for the duration of the brake engagement. Second one is intermittent pulser. Each cycle will flash 10 times and then pause. And then these cycles will repeat for the duration of the brake engagement. The last available option is pulser. And this one just basically provides continuous flashing for the duration of the brake engagement. Now we will show you how to install this. It's really simple. And then after the installation chunk, I will show you in detail how to get inside here, how to program the different modes and how to alter the rate of those different modes. We did think about the safety of such devices during the design phase. So we decided to design this in a way that it will be a pass through component in case you experience a failure on board here it will just pass through your normal brake function, which means you press your brake, your brake light lights up, there's just no effect. In case you do experience that failure, we do offer a warranty, so we have guys standing by in our support department that will take your call, email, Facebook message, whatever, and we'll get you replaced. And that's pretty much it. Now, I'm really excited to show you guys just how easy this is to put on and configure. So let's get started. To begin this installation, you will first remove your passenger seat or seat cowl, lift up towards the rear and press backwards towards the rear of the bike. Now we will need to locate the main wire loom coming from the tail light. And in this particular setup, it is located on the right side, the brake side of the bike. It is a three wire setup with a black, yellow and blue wire along with a white connector. We will disconnect this. So you will press down on this locking tab here. Now we can go ahead and grab our brake light modulator housing and our plug and play sub harness, connect the two. And now we will bridge the gap between the tail light and the motorcycle harness. We will go ahead and now test the functions. You can see here, we do still have a functioning tail light. And when we press the brakes, we now have introduced a strobe brake effect. Power the motorcycle down. And now we simply need to place the brake light, brake light modulator housing in a safe and secure spot in a somewhat vertical orientation. Now, what I mean by that is we do not want it upside down like this, where if water drips down, it will enter into this grommet. So placing it in this fashion will be the most secure and allow you to introduce a little bit more protection. Now this trunk space doesn't have a ton of room. There is limited real estate on where we can actually place this. So what I have found is grabbing one of these zip ties that we include, bend about an eighth of an inch at the very tip, creating a hook like feature. Next, we will route it underneath the rearmost portion of this frame and gently pushing upward that allows it to curl back towards you. And at this point, we can go ahead and route the wire around the channel on the brake light modulator housing.
Now we can go ahead and cut off the excess of the zip tie. And at this point, you can reinstall the passenger seat or seat cowl. This installation is now complete. For mode selection and rate adjustment, we will need to get inside this capsule to access the electronics. These two Phillips head screws will need to be removed. What I like to do is unscrew them until they disengage from the receiving threads and leave them in the cap. Otherwise, it's pretty easy to lose them. If we pull them off with the cap, they are self-captive. All right, now we'll identify the parts here. This button is the mode selector, and this potentiometer is your rate adjuster. Clockwise is faster, counterclockwise is slower. Let's first do our selection of modes. With the brake pressed, press the button once to toggle to the next available program. Now the brake does have to be pressed so that the unit powers up, otherwise you won't be able to make the selection. If you find that you've pressed the button, but the selection has not been changed, just do it again with the brake pressed. So now we will go on to the next program, press the brake once more, press the button once, and now you're in the next mode. Now we've switched twice, so pressing it one more time will return to the original mode that your unit arrived in. Now for rate adjustment, we'll be using the potentiometer. With the brake pressed, we can turn it clockwise to make it go faster, counterclockwise to decrease the rate. Now in brake alert, you will only have nine flashes to make your adjustment and then it'll stay solid. This one doesn't actually lend itself to really fast flashing at the top of the range. Bottom of the range is unusable. So I like to set it somewhere towards three quarters to maybe 80% clockwise. And that does it for me. Now if we change to the next one, this one is Pulsar. And this one just keeps on flashing, so. I like to have it going pretty fast here. Choice is really up to you. If you want to explore the next mode, we have the intermittent pulser. This one to me belongs somewhere close to the top of the range, makes it the most visible. But again, freedom means choice. The decision is ultimately up to you. Once you're done with your adjustment and you're where you want to be with all your modes and rates, replace the cap, turn the screws back in, and it really is just that simple. Replace your brake light modulator in the space that you decided to keep it, and you're good to go.